pathogenesis and salutogenesis are each ways that have been used to approach health. These are the existing frameworks. Traditionally, we've used pathogenesis, which is the study and origins of disease in the belief that this will create health. Salutogenesis, on the other hand, studies the origins and causes of health, and these actually can work very complementary fashion. The assumptions, however, on both pathogenesis and salutogenesis are different. Pathogenesis starting point is disease or a problem. And the idea is we move back from the disease and problem and figure out what caused the problem and eliminate those causes in the belief this will create health. Salutogenesis, on the other hand, must start with a new reality, something we want to create, the world that we want to have. And then we think, how could we create that new reality? It's impossible to start with a problem and be salutogenic because the best you can be if you start with a problem is non-problematic. To be salutogenic, you must start with an idealized outcome. What do you want to create? and then figure out what do we need to do to have that idealized outcome. So in other words, pathogenesis is about how to avoid a problem, where salutogenesis is about how we can approach and reach our potentials. Pathogenesis therefore is reactive. It's either reacting to disease or the possibility of disease to keep it from happening. Salutogenesis on the other hand is very proactive in that it's trying to generate a new outcome that can't and doesn't exist right now and couldn't exist the way we're doing things. It would need to be something new and different to create a different outcome. The assumption that's very different in each of these is that pathogenesis believes that we're inherently healthy and as long as we keep every pathogen, virus, and problem away we'll be as healthy as we can be. Which I think most have realized isn't really true. We need, we need to create health and that's salutogenesis assumption is that we're inherently flawed. We're somewhat susceptible to problems. And knowing that, we must go out and cause ourselves to be healthy. Do what we need to do to give ourselves the best chances we can to live the life we want. So in essence, pathogenesis is idealistic in the belief that we are naturally healthy. Salutogenesis, although Aaron Atanofsky, the developer of this model, calls it pessimistic, it's really just realistic. It's saying that sometimes we're going to get sick. So instead of waiting to get sick to do something, let's go out now and create health and be as healthy as we possibly can be. Then if something does happen, which in all likelihood something will, we can recover that much faster or maybe not even have a problem associated with it because we are in such good health. Really all this is is the law of second, second law of thermodynamics. Second law says that if a system is open and left to itself, it will move towards chaos. Well, if that's true, we have to cause good things to happen. We actually must do what we need to do to make it turn out the way we want it to. Because if we just do nothing, it won't turn out the way we want. In uh, Tal Ben-Shahar's book, Happier, he points out that happiness takes work. We have to do something to create happiness. If you want unhappiness, just do nothing. It's almost assured to happen then. So if we want health, we must make it happen. We must cause health to happen. So pathogenesis is just against pain and loss and not having a problem. Salutogenesis is about creating a gain, creating growth, so we become who it is we want to be. Pathogenesis then really just prepares us to live. It doesn't make our life greater, teaches what we can do to, to be better. It just says, okay, now you're ready to go. Salutogenesis, on the other hand, gives us the capacity and the potential to live our life fully, to get all we can out of life. Pathogenesis is about not falling back or having a problem. Salutogenesis is about how we can move forward to become and be who we want to be. So pathogenesis is about not getting worse. Salutogenesis, on the other hand, is about continuous and never-ending improvement. How can we keep moving forward and becoming who it is we want? Pathogenesis, of course, is a measuring an endpoint. The, op the outcome is generally neutral, no problem or minimize problems. Salutogenesis on the other hand really has no end point. All it has is progress points in that we're moving towards our desired outcomes. So it's measuring gains and optimizing our potential. Once we realize one goal, we realize, wow, if I'm here, I could go there. And that's where we instill that continuous and never-ending improvement. I liken this to what Mother Teresa had said at one time. They asked her once if she'd be in a march against the war. She said no, she wouldn't be in the march against the war but she would be in a march for peace. She said, it's empowering, you empower yourself by being for something, but being against something is disempowering. 
So salutogenesis is for health. Pathogenesis is against disease. We want to empower ourselves to create and be who we want to be. We need to act salutogenically to create the life and health we want. I talk about this in an article, Salutogenesis 30 Years Later, Where Do We Go From Here? Because Salutogenesis was developed in 1979 by Aaron Antonofsky. This article is free online and I encourage you to take a look at it using this link that's available to you. Good luck. I look forward to your improved health and well-being. Have a great day.